Here I've got the gyroscope uh, set up on a gimbal mount so we can look at some of the effects of forces and torques and some of the unusual motions that a gyroscope makes. For example, right now the disc is aiming at you right out there and it's spinning very fast and the gimbal mount makes it an isolated system except I can push on the mount and apply a torque. So one thing these do is when I push forward like this, it tilts down. And when I push back, it tilts back up. Forward, it tilts down. Back, tilts back up. So let's see if we can uh, understand that. Let me draw it a little bit. Now you might wonder why it's not processing. It's not processing because uh, it's balanced, right? There's no net torque being applied by gravity. It's centered on the gimbal mount, everything's symmetric, so there's no f net torque making it spin. But we did apply a net torque to the side and we caused it to rotate. So let's think about that. If we're looking from the side, here it is with its big L vector. And I basically applied a force like this with my finger. Except I wasn't pushing it forward, I was off, I was out of the board to apply a torque. So to really see the torque, we need to look from the top. All right, so now, instead of looking from the side of the table, look down on the table. And again, we'd say it looks like this. The L, angular momentum, is pointing at you, but I'm looking from the top. And then you could see better that I was applying a force uh, from the side, like this. And I was really applying it to the gimbal mount. I wasn't touching the, uh, the, the rotating disc, but it's an isolated system. So really, if I apply the torque to any part of it, it gets transmitted to the disc. It's really, since it's an isolated system, we don't have to think about all the internal little torques and forces that the mount carries. It's just one object, and we applied a torque to it, and it has a big angular momentum. So if we applied the force there off to the side, the R vector is to the axis of rotation, or we could say the center of mass. So there's R. Or we could say this is the axis of rotation and there's R. Either way, we're going to get the same thing. R cross F, we've applied a torque in. All right, so there's the torque we applied. So now let's think, what does that mean? If we applied the torque that way, uh, which way is DL? Same direction as the torque. We apply torque, it's equal to dl dt. So in some time, we apply a dl. Therefore, we also applied the dl in. And we're trying to make circular motion here. That's why I did draw this one, right? So if the dl is down when I push, that means down is this way. So there's dl. So you can see when I apply a force off to the side, dl is down, and what does this make it want to do? Circular motion, like we talked about for precession. And now let's look at the case when we don't apply a torque to it. It's just a free system, but I can pick up the plate, and you'll see that as I turn the plate, it always points towards you, because that angular momentum wants to stay in the same direction, even if I tilt it like this. And this is why they're good for navigation. Um, if I'm a rocket, and I start to go off course, tilting around whoa, like this, you can see it'll always stay towards you. So what they do is they attach baffles to the back. And if I start to go this way, the baffle is attached to the gyroscope and it pushes my rocket thrust the other way and it keeps me on course. So this is how they're used or they used to be used uh, in navigation of rockets and jets and things.